Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead, Brooklyn, and I really think you're gonna enjoy this week's episode of Plant One On Me, because we're going to go with Don Miller, who is a foremost expert in begonias, to the Fort Worth Botanic Gardens. I had no idea about this, but they have the best begonia collection in all of the United States, and it actually rivals some of the collections around the world. So this collection is actually a private collection. You have to make an appointment in order to go to see it, so it's not open to the public, but you're getting a first glance of this perfect secret here in Fort Worth. So enjoy this week's episode of Plant One On Me, Field Trip Edition. How long have you been fascinated with begonias? Oh gosh, well probably fascinated with them for about maybe 30 years. But when I was very young I had a few begonias. What is it about begonias that you truly love? Well there's a couple of things. There's first of all they're the diversity. The, you know, there's just so many different kinds, so many, uh, you know, big leaf, a narrow leaf, a hairy leaf, a shiny leaf, a big plant, uh, you know, a spreading plant, uh, just so much variation in the species. And then when you start getting into the hybrids, it's really, very, you know, the big tuberous flowers. And then they're easy to propagate. So if you get a rare begonia, you can, uh, well, I haven't really found one that you couldn't propagate. <laughs> you know, you can yeah. easily take a lot of them, you can take the leaf off. Yeah. Any of them, you can take a stem. And that's, I think, one reason why they're popular, you know, because they're like a pass-along plant. Mm -hmm. If one's growing in your house, you can, uh, and someone admires it, you can give them a leaf or you can give them a stem and they can take it home. And My impression is that begonias could get maybe a little, a little bit more than some of my other house plants can get a little scraggly at times so you kind of take those off is that something that is common sometimes to begonias like do you need to uh, maybe keep them up a little bit more or there's a little more uh i would say maintenance yeah. you know generally they grow fast some of them will outgrow their space so you have to cut them back mm -hmm. they're always putting on new leaves so they're usually dropping old leaves that's something that you have to kind of accept. In this space that we're in, I mean, you started working here about seven-ish years ago. This space is private now. It's part of the Fort Worth Botanic right. Gardens. Well, the private collection. The private, the private collection. Of course, you know, anyone can view it by making an appointment. And I guess no, not many people would recognize that this is one, of, one, if not the leading place to see begonias in the United States now. This is the largest collection of begonias in the United States. About 400 species, and then about 700 cultivars. We get plants from different botanical gardens, private collectors. Uh, well, the plant right over there, Sizemorier, yeah. was named after a lady from Florida, Mary Sizemore, <laughs> who is constantly collecting in Asia. And that's where we get a lot of the new species. Yeah. From her, really, from her. actually, yeah, that's fascinating. And a lot of the unidentified species yeah. come from her because, you know, in the jungle, they're, they don't have a label. Yeah. <laughs> it's a valid point. <laughs> and then what was interesting, though, is you said a lot of the identified, unidentified species, at least from in America, go through this process and they get a number. Can you explain how that works? The American Begonia Society has a unidentified species list and they limit it to species, although a few cultivars have gotten in there. They describe it and assign it a number. Eventually, someone may recognize it or a botanist may look at it, compare it with other species from the same location. Sometimes it's a new species, sometimes it has been named before, and so then we attach that name to that U number. And you said that there's 1,700 species worldwide roughly roughly yeah. and you know they're always discovering new species yeah. so a few years ago it was 1600 now it's 1700 or even I think I've seen 1800 yeah so it's safe to say that you're somewhere between one-fourth and one-fifth of the way there of actually 
collecting all species. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know that uh, we'll uh, ever have all the species. Yeah. But. Well, I think it's fantastic that you have this many because it, at the end of the day, I mean, it gives somebody who hasn't ever heard of this, such as myself, you know, to have the pleasure of walking through and seeing such diversity among one genus of plants and it's just it's fascinating because like I said I was a little late to the begonia game between you and Steve you're kind of pulling me over slowly <laughs> but I definitely also see as I'm kind of going through the diversity of this I definitely see oh I like certain certain varieties like a little bit more than others uh -huh. you know so I, I get a sense of my style of like a plant I suppose <laughs> Well, those are interesting. So this one has a caudex. Is, yeah. And did you say that this one is also from South Africa? Or where is this South from? Africa. South Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, in Africa there's lots of different species that are yellow. And what's this one's name? Begonia what? And this is Astautii. Now what I wanted to show you... Oh. Beautiful. It almost looks like an orchid. <laughs> too yellow. Yeah. Oh yeah, with a little orange on the inside too. That's stunning. See the flower? Yeah. Typical begonia flower. Yeah. From a morphological standpoint, it's really the flower. Is right. there any other characteristic that uh, when people see it, they're like, oh, that's definitely a begonia? Like if that was well, not in flower, could anybody else tell that that might be a begonia? Usually begonias leaf is, is asymmetrical, Okay. although this one's not, but right. a typical begonia leaf is asymmetrical. So if you cut it in half, they will not be identical. But yeah, the flower is the, the main thing yeah. to really identify. These are some new species from Brazil. Ooh. A lot of the begonias, when they're young, they'll be spotted. They grow, they'll outgrow the spot. Is that the Darth Vader one? <laughs> I mean, how does one thing grow that way or decide to so grow that way? So that's Darth Vaderiana. Well, Darth Vaderiana is from Sumatra, oh. but this is another one from Borneo. Oh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. This is from Mexico. Yeah. You know, some are solid green leaf. Uh -huh. Some will be a real dark leaf. Yeah. This one has the silver line down the yeah. center. This is Imperialis. So when they have this, is it a, do they ever give it a subspecies or a, like a Sometimes number? Sometimes a variety name. Okay. Uh, these do not have a name. We just call them forms. Yeah. So if you actually then bred this one with this one, which are the same species, could you ever predict what would happen? It's hard to say. They could yeah. be some like this, some yeah. like this, some in between. Mm. It's like genetic roulette, I guess. <laughs> and then there's the green blanchii. So a lot of species are really variable. Yeah. And that's something that's, you know, interesting with begonia. Interesting and confusing, because I would imagine if I was the botanist who, like, discovered this and then saw that, and I'd be like, ah, oh, two species, but then you take it back and then... So do you have to do like genetic studies in order to be able to determine uh, whether it's a, a form? Uh, yeah, now about? they're doing DNA. Now this one is... Common name is piggyback begonia. But these, unlike the other piggyback plant, these leaves don't break off and become actual plants. Right. On this species, you can root the leaf, yeah. but that's all you'll get is a rooted leaf. And it looks like it would start growing into a plant, but yeah. it doesn't. Ludwigii. Again, this grows in arid areas. So that's uh, Begonia venosa, okay. Yes. Yeah, I definitely had you know this plant at one point. Should have assumed this one would want a lot of sun just because of the nature of it. And, um, and you'd have it on the drier side then? Right. Okay. Which is unique because when I think of most begonias, you want to ha have a little bit more moisture. Well, this one would be a little more drier than most. Okay. But 
most begonias, it's always better to be a little bit dry than yeah. too wet. Yeah. It's stunning. It's definitely my top Unusual. Like, vibe. Very unusual. And they say it has a, a scent, a lemon scent. Well, if I didn't have allergies Oh, right you now. couldn't get it. <laughs> I don't have a good smeller either, so yeah. I usually don't get it. I would, I, I'll try. Oh wait, no, I actually can smell something. Can you? Surprisingly, even though I have my oh, nose is I stuffed. got it too. Yeah, <laughs> so then it must be really strong. If you have a bad nose and I'm full of stuffed up because of allergies, then that's pretty strong. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this one here with the lanceolate leaves and... This is Egrigia from Brazil. Has little tiny white flowers. So what's the next big step for this space? A acquire more begonias or? I'll acquire more begonias. Some of the ones in the terrariums we'll take out and yeah. see if we can acclimate them to less humidity and uh, work them into the collection. Yeah. And this one, this one's not looking its best because it doesn't like the heat. Yeah. But, but it's, it's in alphabetical order. But it's in alphabetical <laughs> order, yeah. Wow, this is way more spacious though. So you have a, you definitely well, have a lot more. Well, we've got uh, 700 cultivars. This is Red Fred. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Man, this is Challenger. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. So, you know, these plants have been eight feet across. Yeah. Well, we've just rearranged everything because species used to be in here with these. So, uh, well, here's Don Miller. <laughs> there he is. Here he is. <laughs> Stunning because you have, it's the reverse almost, you know, it's, it's got this like beautiful silver appeal. Uh, let's see. Be interesting to see. Actually, you can't see it because it's in more shade. Yeah. But uh, there's a little yeah. better color. Yeah. Brighter light. Yeah. Fascinating how different but they are. Yeah, they're similar yeah. yet different. Yeah. Different color. So basically, if you wanted to maintain this hybrid, you would just have to constantly have cuttings from the first one that you developed. It's like a clone. So it's all, it's genetically identical to the mother plant. Thank you. Thank you for taking us through this and showing us the world of, uh, of begonias. I think a lot of the plant lovers out there will appreciate your passion and your knowledge and also this little gem of a creation that you actually helped create here in, uh, in, in Fort Worth and Dallas. I hope you really enjoyed that tour. And if you're ever in the Fort Worth, Dallas area, be sure to come to the Botanic Garden and call in advance to make an appointment to see the private collections of the begonias for yourself because they are a sight to behold. If you love these episodes, do subscribe to the channel so you can tune in every week. And of course, you can follow my journey on Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn and on my website at homesteadbrooklyn.com. See you next week.